Hey there everyone, this is Jeff at StarCat Products here to bring you a little new feature we're going to have on the site. And I'm going to call it the Foil Fiend because as some of you may know that I do enjoy getting the foil versions of uh, different types of cards and having alternate art. As you saw in our, our last review, I pretty much squealed like a piggy when I got the foil dark hole. So I, I do enjoy getting some foil stuff. So basically, I'm going to talk about decks that are in Yu-Gi-Oh! that you can make that have cheaper versions. <clears throat> but there's also versions of them where you can make that look like what I call where you can bling them up and you can make them look good. And the first one we're going to talk about is the Gravekeeper deck. I call it the Utopia Keeper or Gravekeeper's Utopia because it focuses on playing Gravekeeper cards and using the rank up magic to get the different versions of Utopia out and pretty much destroying everyone using those. Uh, another thing that's coming out soon for this deck why I want to talk about it is they're making the new Gravekeeper cards in the Legacy of the Valiant set which comes out sometime next year and are all, and in that set are a whole bunch of the new Gravekeeper cards and also the Arknight which is going to be awesome and is going to go alongside my Utopia and he has a rank up magic version as well so I'm going to talk about the card that I'll take out of the deck that I have in here right now and he's also not foil so that doesn't I don't like him in my deck he's like the only card that's not in my deck that's not foil So to start off with, I'm going to start off with the main deck. So the main deck here is we got three, three Gravekeeper Spies. What makes this card awesome is that it's very hard to kill, and it has a lot of versions of it that are foil. Uh, these are two of the cheaper ones. The ones on the left are the gold four, and these guys run about a dollar a piece. And the one here is the one I got from the Joey's World, and he runs about 50 cents a piece. So this whole play set shouldn't cost you more than three bucks very key card to the deck it has 2500 defense when it flips up it gets you another gravekeeper card with 1500 or less attack this is really really strong and a very very core card it basically what you can do is you can xyz very quickly with these or you can get another a gravekeeper card out like some of the ones i'm going to show you here later so you can start plus one and doing some combos okay the next two cards in the deck I have two Gravekeepers Recruiters. This is actually pretty strange because most Gravekeeper decks run three of these, but I only like running two. I play a rank up version, so they kind of all need to be the same level. So having a level three monster when you need a bunch of level fours just doesn't float too well with the deck. So uh, I run two of these guys. Uh, the cheaper versions of these guys are paper with a silver tab on the top. Uh, I don't remember what set they're from, forgive me. But they run about five bucks, and these guys run about six to seven. The four ones, and they're from the Legendary Collection Yugi's World. A lot of the the Gravekeeper cards are in Yugi's World, and they went down in price because of it. So it's actually pretty pretty awesome. Okay, okay so the next card we're going to talk about is the Gravekeeper's Assailant. This is another way that I kind of deviate a little bit from the from the standard Gravekeeper deck. I run three, three of these guys because I need guys that are level 4. It's also really, really strong to have these with Necro Valley out. They are 2000, 2000. And they also can change the attack position, the card they attack. So a lot of stuff has like a ton of attack with like hardly any defense. So you go, oh, you're in defense, boom, and you take it out. So this is really awesome. I, I do enjoy this card. I do plan to take some of them out though when, with the new Gravekeeper cards come out. So I might go down to maybe like one or two of these. But for now, uh, these guys aren't really that expensive. You can get paper versions of these for, I want to say, like 50 cents a piece. And the foil ones, I think they're only like 3 bucks. This card is not massively popular with the Gravekeepers. So, and they're ultra rare, so it's awesome. Uh, again, Legendary Collection 3, Yugi's World, is your source for Gravekeeper cards. Okay, the next card we're going to talk about is the big... Daddy himself, the Gravekeeper's Descendant. This is like one of the main cards along with Recruiter for this deck. <clears throat> so this guy, he's a 2000-1700 with Necro Valley out. And basically you can pop any of your face-up grave, uh, Gravekeeper monsters besides himself. And you can destroy any card on the field. This is really strong. It plus ones a lot with the Gravekeeper Recruiter card. And so... These are awesome. These guys are kind of hefty. I think they're about six bucks a piece for me. So, but they're they're excellent. They they came in the structure deck Merrick as a paper version, and then they're also in the set Absolute Power Force. The Absolute Power Force ones, I don't think are foil, so they'll run you about three bucks. 
and the structure deck Merrick ones are about dollar fifty. So you want to do the paper versions it's a little bit more economic, but if you want the foil, they're only in the legendary collection, Yugi's World, and so you get get six bucks for these. All right, here's another deviance I do with the standard Gravekeeper deck. I run three guards. So with the new Gravekeeper cards coming out, you can put these guys face down after she after she dies as the Gravekeeper's apprentice. Don't hold me on that. Basically, when she dies, she can get another Gravekeeper card and put it face down. That way, you can activate a lot of these guys' abilities that flip up. Uh, these guys are pretty cheap. I believe they're about like two two fifty. Uh, these are really strong at 2400 defense and they also bounce a monster when they're flipped up. So along with dealing damage to your opponent when they attack with something little, you also return the guy back to their hand and you have this guy out to the XYZ with or pop with a descendant so you can destroy a card on the field. These guys are really good. Uh, most people only run about one or two of them. I'm crazy and I run three. I think I might go down to two of these when the new Gravekeeper cards come out, but I'm not really certain yet. Now to get to some of the more expensive cards, here's the Gravekeeper Commandant. This is the card that you can discard from your hand, and you can get the Necker Valley to your hand. Uh, this is a really strong card. I only run two. Most Gravekeeper decks, again, run three of these. I deviate a lot from the standard Gravekeeper deck, but I do tend to win with this deck. I would like to run it in tournament. I haven't ran it yet, but it's ready to go. That's obviously I'm doing a review on it and showing you all the foil greatness of it. <clears throat> uh, so this card is pretty expensive, it's about 6 or 7 bucks for the Yugi's World version and there's also some ultimate rare ones and absolute power force that are like 18 to 20 dollars a piece, ultimate ultra rare, are they ult I don't think they're, they're ultra, but they're ultimate rare ones and woo are they expensive. So these guys, pretty good, great card, very very needed card in the deck. Uh, if you need the paper ones, they're in the structure deck Merrick and they run about like 2 to 3 bucks a piece. So it's not that much more money just to go ahead and get the foil ones, but if you want to be cheaper, those are the cheaper ones to get. The next card I run is Sukuyomi. This card is actually very, very expensive to get as a foil. This is the ultimate rare version. It has the cool textures on it. I don't know if you can see it in the video. No, I don't think so. But uh, this card is really good. What it does is when it comes into play, it flips a monster face down so when you have like the guard or say the spy they can activate their abilities again or you can put something in face down and use something like the assailant and go ahead and just smack them dead <clears throat> so they can't activate any abilities or anything so it's really really good uh, so this card is really great I'm not really sure this is astro pack on here I believe so uh, that's probably why it's so expensive I think these are only given out for tournament prizes and so the the standard Tsukuyomi's that you can get are paper. I'm not really sure what sets they're from, but they're paper and they, they're not that expensive at all. And so this card, this card does, this particular one, the, the ultimate version, is a $16. So I really wouldn't recommend running the full version of this, but unless you're a foil fiend like me, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna do a review on another deck, my Photon deck, and there's another card in there that has a paper version it's like ludicrously cheap and then all of a sudden for the full version of one of the cards it's just they cost a heck of a lot more all right so next two the malefic stardust dragon again i deviate from the standard gravekeeper deck they normally run the malefic cyber end dragon but i prefer the malefic stardust dragon because he keeps my necro valleys from dying and it forces them to kill the stardust first uh so this is the ultra rare version of it from the Shonen Jump magazine, and this is one from a collector's tin. The collector's tin run will run you about a dollar. The one from the Shonen Jump, I believe it ranges from like three to eight dollars. So this guy can have a, real, a lot of deviants. One thing to note about this as well is the color quality on the Shonen Jump one's a lot better than our super rare friend over here. And the Shonen Jump one's also ultra rare. You got the gold text here at the top. So. I recommend this one if you're a full fiend, but you know, I mean, I had these. I I buy a lot of cards, so I already had these lying around. I had a whole play set of Stardust Dragons, Malefic Stardust Dragons, so I just used both of them just to show them off. I won the next, the last monster in the deck is one Malefic Cyber End Dragon. A lot of people main deck these in Gravekeeper decks because it's a 4,000 beater, but I don't particularly like him because he's unprotected. And uh, I rather play the Malefic Stardust Dragon because it just it just has more utility to me. 
And so this guy is pretty cheap. I think he's about two to three bucks. Not that bad. The thing about these Malefic guys, though, is you got to play another card in your extra deck in order to run these. So they're not that expensive because you got to buy the other half of them as well. Okay, the next card, a Royal Tribute. I actually got a really good deal on this guy, along with one Descendant, uh, one Commandant, and one of the Guards. As he bundled it all together in an eight buck a bundle for five cards of Gravekeepers. And so it's actually really awesome. So I actually got this for about 150. I don't think it runs more than like three bucks for this. You only can play one of these. It's restricted. And what it does is if you control Necro Valley, each player's each player's both bump, but blah, blah 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 blah. Each player both dump their hands. And so this is amazingly strong, especially on the first turn of the game. And you have another spell I'm going to show you here in a moment that basically allowed you to get some of your Gravekeepers back. So I run one copy of this. Uh, this card is not in the Merrick starter deck though. So if you want these, they've been reprinted a lot as they're only paper before. And so I wouldn't say they wouldn't probably run you more than about 50 cents to a dollar for one of these. All right, the next card we're going to talk about is Wonder Wand. This card works really, really well with the Gravekeeper monsters. What it does is you equip it to a spell type, spellcaster type monster, and it gains 500 attack. And after that, you can tribute this and the card, as long as you control both of them, and you can draw two cards. It's really, really good with the recruiter because it allows you to get to draw two cards immediately and then search your deck for any of the gravekeepers with 1500 or less defense, mainly the commandant, so you get another Necro Valley. Uh, this card is actually in the V for Victory starter deck, along with being in the Star Pack 2013. You can get them for about, say, like a quarter a piece for the paper versions. These particular versions are about 650 a piece. These are ultimate rare. They have the cool textures on them and they gleam. And they have the gold text, so these are really, really, really nice. They actually look a lot better on the camera than they do, like in real life, like because you can't see the texture. So I guess the camera is correcting it to where it just looks glowy, like shiny. So maybe the sleeve as well. So, so the next card I'm gonna talk about. Uh, here we go. This is probably where I'm gonna get a lot of flack. I run the rank up limited variants for instead of the regular one because I run a little bit different monster types in my deck so I don't really want to run the ones where they have to be the same attribute and type because what if I want to rank up into a different guy that has a good come into play ability that I may show you later. Uh, you can get these in the V for Victory starter deck and they're about like 50 cents a piece. They're ultra ultra rare and it's a guarantee just when you buy the deck and also along with a lot of Utopia cards I'm going to show you. So this guy, this is a really budget friendly card. The other rank up magics rank for like 350 to like seven bucks a piece, so I really recommend these, especially if you're on a budget. If you remember my Gold Series 5 Haunted Mine review, I got the Mystical Space Typhoon. And this is the Gold Rare, Ghost Gold Rare Hollow Foil version. It has a hologram on it. it gleams. It's it's a beautiful card. Uh, this card is actually quite expensive. It's about 12, 15 bucks for this. So I'm actually really, really happy I have one of these in my main Gravekeeper deck. Uh, so Mystical Space Typhoon has been reprinted like a million times. You can probably get them for probably like a 10 cents to a quarter. If you want a budget foil version of it though, the V for Victory deck does have a version that is a super rare and it is $5 and that will give you a foil one. It's also reprinted in the Legendary Collection uh, for Joey's World. It's about $5 for that I believe as well. So good stuff here. This is a really beautiful card. I love it. The next card, Allure of Darkness. This card is amazingly expensive if you want the ultimate or ultra versions of it. I highly recommend the limited edition uh, premium card from the Raging Battle premium editions. Uh, so basically you, you draw two cards and you have to banish the dark monster in your hand or dump your whole hand. Uh, you can gamble, have no, just top deck this, play it and hope you draw another Gravekeeper monster. And so you also get one of these in the Merrick starter deck. So again, you can probably get one of these for probably like a quarter or so. So great card, excellent card for the Gravekeepers. All right, our next card here is the Book of Moon. This card is actually pretty cheap to get. What it does is it's a, it's a quick spell. It's a, and it turns a monster from face up to face down defense position. So it's really good with all of your, your spies and your guards also to take out certain guys that the Gravekeepers can't handle. 
And so this is a secret rare version of it. Uh, this card was in Yugi's World and Joey's World, so I want to say it'll probably run you about three, three to three fifty. And it's secret rare. It's, it's a very beautiful card. A lot of this deck is from the Legendary Collections. So next up is the Big Daddy himself. For what makes the Gravekeepers awesome is the Necro Valley. Always run three Necro Valleys. The ultra rare ones are really cheap. They're like two bucks a piece, I believe. And what it does is it kills the graveyard, gives all your gravekeepers 500 attack and defense, and it makes it where players can't banish cards from the graveyard. It's so good. There's so many ways to get this back. It's awesome. This is like my favorite field spell. And it works great with the Malefic Stardust because it won't get destroyed. And they're ultra rare and they're pretty. I like them. Alright, we're getting near the almost done with our spells here. So the next card is the secret rare dark hole from Joey's World. The one that I pulled during our review. Told you I was going to put it in my deck, I didn't lie. So yeah, this card, restricted, run it, destroys all monsters on the field. You can get a secret rare one from Joey's World for 350 dollars It's also been reprinted several times in many starter decks, you can probably get it for 50 cents and a dollar. And the one that I really really want personally is the gold rare one. And it's about nine bucks. I really want to get one of those one day, but you know when you're getting married and the holidays are coming up, you got to think about other people. All right, next card, Gravekeeper Steel. This works very, very well. A royal tribute. When you make everyone dump their hand, you can play one of these and get two of your gravekeepers back from your graveyard. Uh, it works really, really well at Commandant because you can discard them again to search your deck for another Gravekeeper card. Oh uh, yeah, Necro Valley. Uh, this is the, these are the ultra rare versions from Joy's Real. These run about $1.50 a piece. I'd highly recommend playing three of them because this card is just excellent. Excellent card. Absolute Power Force versions are common paper versions and they run about a dollar a piece. So you might as well just buy the freaking Joy's World version because they look a heck of a lot prettier. Next up, Torrential Tribute. Got this from Legendary Collection Yugi's World. It's also in Joey's World. These guys run about five bucks a piece. It's a trap card. Flips up. Destroy all monsters on the field. Excellent card. Restricted. Always run one of these in your deck. Even if you don't play any monsters, it destroys everything. Next card. Dark Bribe. This card has been pretty good about getting reprinted, but even then, the reprint versions of it are about three fifty to five bucks a piece. Uh, these are the foil versions. I paid about nine bucks a piece. These are from one of the video games. I'm not really sure which video game it was, but these are super rare versions. The ultra rare version is the prettiest one. It's from Dark Dark Legends, but that guy's like 20 bucks. No thank you. I'll settle with the supers. So what this card is a counter trap. Flips up. You counter any spell or trap that's played and your opponent draws one card. Very excellent. Next card, Solemn Warning. This card came in a collector's tin. And what it does is it, it's a counter trap, flips face up, and you negate the summon, summon of a monster or a spell or trap trap card that will destroy something, I believe. No, it doesn't negate a spell or trap card, or a monster would be special or would, would be summoned. There you go, yeah, my bad. So yeah, this is a, from the collector's tin, it's super rare. And so most of the time if it's something like this, a super rare version of it will probably run you about three to five bucks. It's restricted, so you only need one. But this is a very excellent card. You can stop a lot of stupid broken xyz's and synchros and fusions from coming out this oh yeah your lead joke or whatever oh your your divine knight felgren oh, well, oh he's gone i don't care i didn't he's just negated last card on the main deck is the mirror force the secret rare from from yugi's world this guy will run you about five to six bucks but you only can play one mirror force a cheap budget version of mirror force that's foil is the one from the V for Victory deck. I actually pulled two of those, and I imagine those will probably run you between like 150 and two bucks. So the next part we're gonna talk about is my extra deck and my sideboard. So see you then. All right, guys, let's talk about the extra deck. Since this is called a Utopia Keeper or Great Keeper's Utopia deck, I run two regular Utopias. This guy is almost in every starter deck they made. He also has a paper version in the Star Pack 2013, so should it run you more than I say like a dollar? And Utopia is like the standard level four XYZ. Whenever you're attacked or a monster declares an attack, you can attach one material. He can negate that attack. He's a 2500, 2000. So it's really, really good. Really strong card. He has a lot of good mores with rank up magic. 
Here's the one card in my deck that is not foil. Number 104, Masquerade. Uh, I like this card because he's really big. He uses three level four monsters. Works really, really well with the Gravekeepers. I can attach a material to negate a card activation upon his monster effect during the battle phase. And so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, if, it, if I do negate it, uh, I inflict 800 damage to them. And then once per turn, I can send the top card of my opponent's deck to the grave, which really, really sucks. Well, on Earth, when I want to give them graveyard, most people exploit the graveyard. So this card's it's okay. I more want his rank up version more than that, which is this card. Number C104, Umbral Horror Masquerade. So this one, he's special summoned. You target one spell trap on the field and destroy it. Then if you have number 104, Masquerade as a material, you can do this. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated on your opponent's side of the field, you can attach one XYZ material from this card, negate the activation, and send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard. And if you do, half your opponent's life points. And he's at 3,000. 3,000. Which is the biggest monster in my deck besides the Malefic, Cyber, and Dragon. So it's really easy to get into those. Right, so the next card I run are two Utopia Rays. This card is actually really, really, really shit. I don't really like it. All it's used for is to add as additional material onto the Utopia monsters so I can have another material to detach because I never ever have less than a thousand life. I mean, if I do, I'm probably just going to die anyways. So, yeah, that guy's pretty cheap. He has a Ghost Rare version that's like six or seven bucks, but his regular one's probably like a dollar. So next one is the Utopia, yeah, the number C39 Utopia Ray V. Blah, man, that's a, that's a mouthful. So this guy's really awesome. He's a 2600, and then whenever he he detaches a material, you activate him. You can destroy a monster, face up monster in the field, or a monster that's face down. But it's better if it's face up. Then you deal damage to them equal to that monster's attack. And then you can attack with them still too. So it's actually really really good. Uh, he's not protected by Spiller Traps though, but there is another version of Utopia I'm going to show you that is. Uh, both this guy and this guy in the regular Utopia are all in the V for Victory deck. So really, if you want, you can buy three copies of the V for Victory deck. You'll get the Wonder Wand, the Utopias, you get some Gaga Ga Shields that are always useful. You can get the, the cheaper version of the Foil Mirror Forces and the Mystical Space Typhoons. So it's actually really... I did use a lot of pieces of the... V for Victory deck in this deck before it was all foil. So here's the next card. It's the Utopia Ray Victory. I love this card. It's so good. These are ultimate ones. I actually got sent one from a vendor and he gave me an ultra one that I paid for the ultimate one, but he was cool and gave it back to me and let me swap it out. And so this guy is a 2800. He cannot, your opponent cannot activate any spells or traps and he is attacking. And then when he attacks, if he attacks a face-up monster, you can detach a material, and he gains half that monster's attack. Yeah, I'm sorry, equal to that monster's attack. I need to read these sometimes. He gains attack equal to that monster's attack. So he always will deal 2,800 damage. This card is so awesome. And if it's face-up, he freaking negates it. It's so good. I love this card. It's my favorite card in this deck. I love it. It's awesome. Next cards, Cyber and Dragon. I'm sorry, I had to talk about how much this guy's worth. A Utopia Ray Victory. He is from Judgment of the Light. His ultra rare version is about five bucks, and his ultimate rare version is about seven bucks. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. It's a new feature. I got to get used to doing it here. Next two, Cyber and Dragon. Heck yeah. <clears throat> this guy's need. Got to remove one of these from the game in order to play the 4,000 beat stick known as the Malefic Cyber and Dragon. Uh, these are both alternate art, kind of cool looking ones. This is a Hobby League one. And this other one here is the alternate art Legendary Collection 2 GX era one. This guy runs you about three bucks. This guy runs you about two bucks. The most expensive one you can get is the one from Cybernetic Revolution. And he is about $16 to $20. That's very, very expensive. Uh, the best ones to get are the ones from the Legendary Collection. Again, the Legendary Collections are really, really awesome if you want to get full versions of stuff and not pay an arm and a leg for them. The cheapest one is about 75 cents and it's from the Duelist Pack Zane. Last one here. 
Stardust Dragon. I run three of these. I don't run a Stardust Road or anything to get them out, but I use them for my Malefic Stardust. I run three, even though I'll only run two of the Malefic versions because people like to bounce crap all the time. So I'm not going to get screwed over by my own side. I kid you not, I got these at a convention for six bucks a piece. They are not that much online. This Stardust Dragon is about twelve bucks online. I got him for six. These are the collector's tin ones. They're secret rare. And the camera's not really good at picking up the secret rare though. Eh, whatever. Okay, so uh, there here's the different variant. So I have some ultimate rare Stardust Dragons from the Dealers Genesis. They are thirty bucks a piece. I want ghost ones, but they're sixty bucks a piece. There's also some gold ones which look awesome. Those are about twenty a piece. So yeah. Not really getting those, so I'm really happy that I got some of those for cheap, especially if I'm just going to dump them in the graveyard. So now we're going to talk about the side deck. The deck that I swap out so I can beat your butt. Three Gravekeeper Visionaries. These are always great for when you fight against punks and play way too much destruction. You can discard a Gravekeeper monster and he regenerates. Uh, he gains 200 attack for each Gravekeeper in the graveyard. These are the ones from Absolute Power Force. They're about $3.50 a piece for the Super Rare foil. He only has a Super Rare. All of his other versions are paper, and his paper versions are about $0.50 cents a piece. There's some in the Legendary Collection Yugi's Roll that are reprinted, and they're also in the Merrick Starter deck. Next up on the side is the Compulsory Evacuation Devices for crap like Galaxy Eyes and all kinds of like Draco Sack, just shit that I can't kill. Bounce it. Fuck you, you're gone. Bounced you. This is the one from, Yu from Yugi's World. Uh, I want to say these guys probably run you about 350 for the secret rare ones. They got reprinted like a million times. You probably get paper ones for like 50 cents a piece. But uh, this card's great, especially to have it on the side. Next up, Forbidden Chalice. This is the one from Raging Battle. That's the, the ultra rare one. These are reprinted in the Battle Pack 2. These are really good because you can play them and you can negate something. And it also gains 400 attack. But the main thing you want to play it for is to that, that negation ability. It's like you want to negate one of the Malefic guys so you can attack with other monsters. Really, really good. You also can negate an annoying XYZ monster that you can't kill. So, very, very good. Uh, the ones from the Battle Pack run for about $3 to $5. And the runs, this one here, probably run you about $12. Next up, Magician's Circle. This is really, really good for getting the Visionary out. And like, if you're being real aggressive uh, and you want to do a beatdown strategy, uh, you can flip these up when the Spellcaster monster attacks. And each player must get a Spellcaster monster with 2,000 or less attack. And so a lot of people that play Effect Veiler and all this other crap that's annoying, they have to force it and put it in attack position. You can just attack it with your huge Gravekeeper Visionary and just beat it up. It's awesome. This is one from Yugi's World. This one ran me about... A dollar fifty, and this is one from I don't know what NTR is. I I don't remember. I'm sorry, guys, but this one ran about like two fifty because it's a lot older. You can tell in a different color quality, but this one's definitely a lot older over here. But excellent card, especially to have it on the side. Next up, a run for Trap Hate with two Royal Decrees. These are the ultra rare versions from Yugi's World. I actually pulled three of these from my Yugi's World boxes that I got. I want to say these are about three bucks a piece. So this, when these are face up, they negate all other trap cards on the field. This is awesome. You also play this in response when they activate. So they go, oh, mirror force will boom negate. So I like this card. It's foil, excellent. Three bucks a piece. Really good to side with. Next up is a foil shrink. This is for stuff that just beat the, that beats down. I just can't kill it. Uh, I could play this. I could half their attack. It's a quick spell. Uh, this is one of the ones from. A special edition from a premium edition. I can probably get one of these for probably about a dollar. Uh, I got a couple of these from some random stuff I bought at the department store that are bundled with it. So they practically just give these away. So I say, fifty to a dollar, fifty cents to a dollar for a shrink. Okay, next up, it's a really really strong card here, Forbidden Lance. This is a very very staple card. Uh, it does you play it. It makes a monster lose 800 attack, but it's unaffected by the effects of other spell and trap cards. So you can save something from dying, or you can make something smaller and kill it. Or you can target it something that they're trying to buff, and you can make it an invalid target. Really, really strong. Uh, these are the foil versions from Storm of Ragnarok. Uh, these guys are on about 13 bucks a piece. 
yeah, there's paper versions from the Battle Pack too, but they're still eight bucks a piece. It's a pretty staple card, guys. So not really gonna get that one cheap. Uh, the last spell on the side here is a Foolish Burial. I use this to put a Gravekeeper's Visionary in the graveyard or whatever, depending if I'm doing the beatdown strategy. And I use Gravekeeper's Steel to get the card back. It's pretty good. This is the full version from Joey's Road that I pulled during our review. Uh, this card runs about three bucks. And last but not least, the third Gravekeeper's Commandant. When you play the Visionary version of the deck where you play the big guy that can regenerate, uh, you kind of need to have guys in the graveyard, so running three of these really, really helps. And also make sure you have Necro Valley out, especially if you need to have it out against a deck that really utilizes the graveyard. Having three ways to search for it is excellent. So again, this guy's about six to seven bucks a piece. It's from Legendary Collection 3, Yugi's World. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed my little talk about my Utopia Keeper, Gravekeeper's Utopia deck. Uh, this deck shouldn't run you more than I'd say probably He's an educated guess. Get them think how much I spent about eighty dollars. And you have pretty, pretty, pretty version of this deck. I mean, look at that. It just gleams. There's just sleeves on it, but you can just see the gleam. It is beautiful. It's a really good deck too. Uh, I play, I'll tell you how it goes if I run it in tournament. But anyways, this was Jeff with Starcat Products. Hope you enjoyed the first episode of Full Fiend. If it's uh, popular and kicks off pretty good, we'll make it a pretty regular feature. Anyways, be sure to subscribe, and this is Jeff signing out.